Hannity Sports now bring you our main event of the evening. This bout is scheduled 10 round contest for the vacant WBC International Light Heavyweight title. The contest sponsored by William Hill, Infinitum, Newman and Everlast. The officials have been appointed by the WBC and the British Boxing Board of Control. Supervisor for the WBC is Steve Mertz. The steward in charge for the British Boxing Board of Control is Martin Flory. And the inspectors working the contest are Sarah Lee and Spencer Hedges. Three judges score the bout at ringside. They are Brahim Ace Adi from Belgium, Ian John Lewis from England, and Alexander Walter of Germany. Timekeeper on the bell is Jason Booth of England. And upon the sound of the bell, the third man in the ring is our A star referee, John Latham of England. Those are the officials, and they are ready. The boxers are in their corners, and they are ready. So, for the fight fans joining us ringside here in Coventry, and the millions of viewers joining us live and free on Channel 5, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this party started! <laughs> Firstly, boxing out of the blue corner, standing with his head trainer, Joe Pennington. He's wearing the black shorts trim with gold this evening. On the scales, officially at 12 stones, 6 pounds, 8 ounces. 23 professional victories, including 14 going inside the scheduled distance. He stands in the ring this evening as a former IBF youth middleweight champion and former English middleweight champion. He boxes out of Leeds, West Yorkshire. Introducing Reese Cartwright. And standing in the red corner with his head trainer, Paul Cunahan. He's wearing the black solid shorts this evening. He scaled at 12 stone, five pounds, eight ounces. 16 career victories, including five going inside the distance. And he stands here proudly tonight as the former English and British light heavyweight champion. He boxes out of Birmingham, England. Introducing Shetka! Peter! <laughs> Referee John Latham will now give his final instructions. Right, lads, you know what I expect from you both. You obey my instructions at all times. When I tell you to break, you both break clean. Defend yourselves at all times, and the best luck to you both. Touch gloves, lads. Touch them up. What a chance for Reese Cartwright, live on terrestrial television, up at light heavyweight, huge task in front of him. As Jeanette was saying, he's battled desperate demons outside of the ring. Can he produce a memorable night inside against Shaq and Peters, devastated by losing that British title to Craig Richards and trying to find his way back. He's a couple of journeymen, but now he's got a stiff test in the shape of Cartwright, and they both come out firing here, Richie. Tactics are plain and simple for both boxers, but for Pitters, you just got to keep his opponent on the end of the jab and box at long range and concentrate on straight shots. For Cartwright, got to move his head as he's coming forward. His job is to get inside the longer reach of his opponent, so he's got to move the head and avoid punches as he's coming forward. But he's got to look for the right hand over the top, Dave. He's got to whip that punch, but it's getting into the position to land that shot. Quick feet in, and then the right hand comes over. But it's going to be a tough, difficult job for him because Pitters is well schooled, he's very good at boxing at long range. Already a little bit of success for both fighters and Cartwright closing the gap. A little bit of effect at the moment. Cartwright is determined to seize this chance. And there was a sense around the place beforehand that his team really fancy this job. He's a big outsider, but they think he can do it here. It's not a bad start from Cartwright. Just gets caught with a shot there from, from Pitters. 
But Cartwright on that front foot, beating pitchers to, to the punch. But if you allow pitchers to get into a rhythm behind that jab, that's where Cartwright will have the problems. John Latham says, slip. Crowd got excited. The crowd is overwhelmingly behind Shaq and Pitters here, the local fighter. Cartwright getting that jab going as well and followed it up with a right hand. Yeah, he's looking for the right hand. One of the mistakes he's making though, Dave, as he's coming forward, as he throws his jab, keeps dropping his right hand. Got to watch that. He's got to watch out then for the left, left hook that will come back from, from Pitters. He watch as Cartwright throws that jab, then the right hand comes down, down to his chest. And that's a bit of a mistake, so he's got to watch what he's doing as he comes forward. Pitters landed the right hand and then the left hook didn't land clean and Cartwright comes back with punches in his own. Terrific opening round here in Coventry. No sense of them feeling each other out. So important that Cartwright was able to prove he could back Pitters up and he's proved that in this opening round. It's a close one, hard one to score. Right, you can. Good work from Pitters um, at the start of the round with the long range shots. Cartwright certainly coming forward. For me, may have just nicked the round. It's a close one, Dave, it really is. It could have gone either way, but I'd, I would probably just go with Cartwright with that front foot pressure. Um, but as the round went on, Pitters started to land um, better, longer, straighter shots. But Cartwright coming forward, it's the right way to, to, to go about it. He's just got to concentrate on his accuracy. But keep the pressure on him all the time. Bully him on the ropes, yeah, bully him. He'd be leaning into him, his shoulder. And then short up, but glad just had to hit the punches. Joe Pennington there. Trained Reese Cartwright as an amateur, was in his corner when he won the novice title eight years ago. It's been an interesting journey since. Won his last six fights, Reese Cartwright, but spread over four years. Now they believe that light heavyweight is the future. He wants to be part of the picture. To do that, he needs to make a point here against Shaq and Fittis. As they exchange at the start of round two. Pitters again look for that left hook, that weakness in Cartwright that you've seen, which is Pitters and his team have seen it too. He missed again with it there. Yeah, he missed with it. I mean, best to set that up with the right hand first, a right hand left hook combination. That's what he should be throwing. But like I say, Cartwright just, just keeps dropping that right hand as he's coming forward and jabbing, so he's got to watch out. Um, but it's not a bad start again for, for, for Cartwright. What he's got to concentrate on also, Dave, is to try and push Pitters back to the ropes. The taller man will prefer boxing from the centre of the ring. This is where he's got to do his work now. When you get Pitters onto the ropes, the feet will come square and then the body becomes open uh, for, for the attacks. Well, that's what Richards did so effectively. Dramatic fight that in Redditch. Richards had Pitters down early and then Pitters came back and recovered and boxed his way back into it and then was caught again and uh, had his title ripped from him. Craig Richards then gave Dimitri Bivol a, a useful fight. Pitters struggling to measure the distance at Cartwright backs him up again he's had a, a dream opening here Reese Cartwright couldn't have gone much better for him he started well as Cartwright on that front foot Pitters has just hasn't found his range with the jab hasn't been accurate with that shot so he hasn't got into a, a rhythm yet as um, Pitters he's relying on his right hand as Cartwright's coming forward but like I said he's got to start throwing that left up and that may trouble Cartwright We've seen that Pitters himself can be vulnerable to the left hook and Cartwright landed that punch a couple of times as he comes forward again and tries to bully the much bigger man. And any thoughts that Shaq and Pitters could 
just win this behind that chat. Lucky beats Chad Sugden to win the British title. Well, they have to be put to one side, but that's good work that's for better. Peters. Yeah, that was better. Double left hook, left hook to the head, then he switches downstairs to the body. So that was much better work towards the end of the round, but it, it, it's a can't right round for me. On that front foot, box very well. Away from it, okay? Chopping right hand there from Pitters, that was a good shot, but can't right throughout the round coming forward, probably had the better of it. Double jab right hand that went through and got Pitters onto the ropes here. And then he just whips the shots in and around the guard of Pitters, who's struggling to keep Cartwright at bay. There's that left hook, double left hook actually. Head then body, that wasn't too bad from Pitters, better work from him. Okay. Good. Good. No, get, get that jab going. Get that jab going. Right. Good. 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 Okay. Right. Paul Cunahan, soggy as they call him. In the corner with Shaq and Peters. They said he had a terrible camp for that Craig Richards defeat. Broke his nose, perforated eardrum. The result of that, he backed off. He invited the pressure. No excuses here, though. Everything's gone to plan as far as we know. But already, you can see that Reese Cartwright really fancies causing the upset here. Pitters has got to get the jab going a little bit more and double that punch up, the double jab right hand especially. He's got to keep um, Cartwright at bay and keep him off balance. There's that double left hook again. Now they're serious punches. Good shots there from Pitters. Good head movement there from Cartwright. Yes, nice little roll there from um, Cartwright as he's coming forward. Pitters is, is started this round a little bit better. More because he's doing a little bit more work. And as I say, that Cartwright catches him with a couple of good shots. There's that left hook from Cartwright. Dex Spellman caused problems to Pitters with that exact punch. And Cartwright can punch 14 knockouts, albeit largely at middleweight on his record, but he can certainly back. That was a nice shot, short, sharp right hand from Pitters. Catches Cartwright coming in. That wasn't too bad. There's the left up from Pitters. And he's got to try and throw that. He's got to slip to his left. Uh, as Pitters then throw the left hook as Cartwright's coming forward with the jab because as he throws the jab that's when he drops his right hand look at this from Cartwright I wasn't expecting him to win the battle of the jabs and set up that right hand but that's what he's doing and the little uppercut on the inside from Cartwright as well it's a good approach from Cartwright because he's rolling He's, he's, he's rolling as he's moving and then coming out of the roll with the hook. Both missed with wild swings there. And there's that jab from Pitters. And there's that little short right hand again from Pitters. Cartwright just keeps coming forward here. Little bit of success for Pitters. Yeah, that was a slow jab there from Cartwright. Can't afford to make that type of a mistake. Miles better, yeah. So what you're doing now, you're walking him down, you guard up, you're jabbing his head off, you're landing a bolo shot. There you got caught with the right hand, you know why you left, got your left hand again. Yeah, six yeah. telling you. No, I am six telling sorry, you. Joe, Listen, when he leads down, yeah. 
better round, I thought, for, for Pitters at the start of the round, started well. Upped his work rate a little bit in this round, did Pitters. The midsection probably, um, Reese Cartwright did a little bit better. A couple of good left ducks, keeps coming forward. And then, then Pitters finishes the round um, better with a couple of good right hands. So a fairly close round. I'll probably go just Pitters. Um, he's got off the mark for me. I've got it two rounds to one now for Cartwright. Close rounds here, action-packed but tight. One of those fights where you could make a case for either fighter in each round so far. Who knows where that might lead us? Battle of the jabs again at the start of round four. Seen vulnerability from both of them in their careers so far. Pitters against Richards, a little against Dex Spellman. Cartwright was stopped dramatically by Raphael Chiruta. At middleweight, a huge surprise. A storm that it looked like he'd weathered, but then it was waved off slightly controversially in the opening round. But sense that they can both be hurt just adds to the intrigue here. Cartwright is, is right in the contest, Dave, when he closes that gap down. But Pitters now, he's landing with some quality shots. Another good left up to the body went in there, and a right hand. Up close, though, Cartwright is always in it. He's making it scrappy, he's making it untidy. But Pitters has got sort of better technique at mid and long range when he lands his punches. But Cartwright on the inside, he's a real handful. All of that's why it was so important for Pitters to try and keep it at long range with that jab. But Cartwright isn't allowing that. A little bit ragged this from Cartwright. The first time. Quality shot there from Pitters. Yeah, nice shot, little left up we spoke about it earlier. Couple of good left ups to the body as well, that will slow, or will it slow Cartwright down? He can't keep taking those type of shots, but again Cartwright very determined coming forward. Right hand there from Pitters. Cartwright though responding. Oh, that was a good left update to the body from, from Pitters. You could see Cartwright's yeah. legs just sat, but he comes back looking for that uppercut all the time and he throws it again now on the inside. Another good right hand. This is better from Pitters. More dangerous from him. The jab is getting slower, you see, from Cartwright, and his feet are just slowing down slightly. That's just allowing Pitters to come back with that fast right-hand counter. He's got to keep his jab sharp as Cartwright. He's got to quicken the feet up. If it slows down, then it allows Pitters to come back. I agree. So, listen to me. Listen to me. I know you're breaking him down. You're breaking him down good. Cartwright coming forward, double jab right hand, and just misses with the right hand, but the double jab wasn't too bad. He's bobbing and he's weaving, he's looking for that left up. Misses with the right uppercut on the inside. There's that chopping right hand from Pitters, also catches a, a shot also. And there's that right hand again from Pitters. Lovely sharp counter punch as Cartwright comes forward. <laughs> Inside to bully him and try to beat him up, don't do that. Now out box him, now box him. When you inside, push against him. Push against him. Yeah. Let's go now. Double jab right hand, keep on him all the time. You're not going to get through his guard. So jab, jab, right hand, work him. That was really interesting advice there from Joe Pennington. You're trying to bully him, don't. You're out boxing him anyway. Get back to your boxing. It is warms to the task. Will Cartwright be able to? Cartwright spoke before. 
pitcher's catch didn't reach it. He just caught it with an excellent uppercut there. His best punch of the fight so far. The contract took it. I mean, to think Cartwright has fought most of his career as a middleweight, I mean, he's stepping up here to, to light heavy. Oh, that was a nice shot. That was a good left up there from Pitters. And again, Dave, we spoke about that punch earlier. That right hand of Cartwright has got to stay nice and high to try and block that shot, but one gets through. Then Cartwright, though, comes forward and tries to push the bigger man back. Got to keep the head movement going, Dave, here at Cartwright. He's just slowing down a little bit, and that will encourage Pitters, and Pitters will start being more successful with the straight right hand and the left hooks that uh, he's throwing. Yeah, Pitters is starting to land the quality shots. You heard Paul Cunahan in the corner say you're breaking him down. Cartwright still mounting a serious challenge, don't get me wrong, but his pit is just starting to get on top here. With better work, as we know, from Cartwright, I think Pitters just took his eye off the ball here and he's allowing Cartwright to close that gap down. When Cartwright closes the gap, then he, he really, like I said, he, he's, he's a lot more successful on the inside, short and mid-range, than Cartwright is brought right into the contest. Just open them up there and then Cartwright comes back with a flurry of punches of his own. Back Peters up. Well, he needed that Cartwright and he produced it. Super sustained attack there from Cartwright. And like I say, close that gap down again and get the punches going. It is going to the body, which makes a bit of sense as Cartwright comes forward again and tries to unload. Excellent this from Cartwright. Great spirit, trying to almost walk Shaq and Pitters down here. Good round from Cartwright, walked onto an uppercut there from Pitters, but as the round went on, he, he got better and better. There, there's the same shot from a different angle. That was a cracking shot from Pitters. Let's have a look at this left up. Yeah, nice left up. Left up from Pitters again. Just yeah. keeps coming forward, Cartwright. Better end to the round for Cartwright. And just keeps the attacks going, and for me, he won the round. Moving to the second half of the fight here. How are you scoring it at home? It is one of those fights that's tough to score. Cartwright has done significantly better than many observers thought he would. And the faith that his supporters had in him has been backed up here. See in a moment how rich he's got it. Many would have Cartwright in front at this point. That's what Pitters has got to concentrate on, Dave, is that, that central position. That's so important to him, that jab right hand. He's got full range of movement then, centre of the ring for a tall boxer. He's always... He boxes with, with an advantage, almost. Back to the ropes, into the corners, then he's at a disadvantage. The movement's restricted, and it brings the shorter man into it. So from the centre of the ring, look, he's in control now. These are good moments for Pitters and dangerous ones for Reese Cartwright. Every time so far Pitters has had success, Cartwright has responded and he does so again here. Exchange 
range of jabs there. Just better variation there from Pitters, the odd right up, a good's going in, left up also. And he put a lot into that last round, remember, Reese Cartwright. It was a good round for him, and I think Pitters has realised that. May have had a roasting in that corner, and he's come out and um, he's been in control up to now, Pitters. And Pitters with that jab, just trying to take control. Used it more in this round than he has in the fight. Well, he's controlled the he's controlled the tempo in this round, Dave, and the pace with that jab, keeping Cartwright at bay, keeping him at distance. It's been a better round for Cartwright. Sorry for Pitters. Still though, Cartwright comes forward. It is just using his feet a bit more here, just measuring the distance and finding a way to dominate. He just senses the danger, you see, when he's on the ropes. Knows he's got to move, get into the ring space. And this has been a positive round for him, a good response from the previous round. Up, he's blocking all the shots. He's not getting caught no more. He's blocking elbow. So Cartwright coming forward here. Pitters putting some combinations together. Chopping right hand. Trying to catch him with the left up. Bit of a glancing punch, if anything. Cartwright coming back. Let's take a look at how Richie has it. He has it dead level, 57-57, with four rounds remaining. As I said, tough fight to score. I know it's rolling out the cliche, but it's true here. A lot of close rounds. I'm sure I know a lot of you score it at home. We'll have the same opinion, a different one. Three people that matter, of course all around the ring if it goes the distance it will be interesting how will Cartwright respond to that previous round because it was a good round for Pitters he got back in into control with his jab Cartwright just seems to have slowed down when the pace slows it suits Pitters Cartwright's got to get forward again wasn't a bad right hand from both of them. They all landed simultaneously. But Cartwright has got to up the pace, but he's getting caught, Dave. Great uppercut there from Pitters, but then Cartwright responds. He is a fighting man, all right. He was buzzed himself, and he waded straight back in. And he has Pitters now in a crisis on the ropes. What a round this is. What a response from Cartwright. Where is Reese Cartwright getting this from? Better work from Cartwright, sustained pressure, going through the gears. It's, uh, it's certainly what he needed. The previous round was for Pitters. I asked the question, what will Cartwright do? How will he respond? And he responds in a real positive way. He's corner on that feet, shouting instructions, but that was a great turn of pace there from Cartwright. Backs Pitters up again. Trying to pick his punches as intelligently as he can. Just when you think Cartwright was slowing down, and he just steps on the gas. And it surprised Pitters. That cross there from Pitters. They're both just slowing up, not surprisingly, given the pace so far. Cartwright got to keep moving the head as he's coming forward, Dave. Having a good round. But he, the head movement is so important as he's coming forward. Got to avoid the shots like that. 
good work from Peters to the body. Might want to look there a bit more often. He landed with an uppercut as well. The Cartwright has dragged Pitters into a real scrap here in this round. And he's the one that has come off the better. Big round for Cartwright here, coming forward. That's when they both sort of landed with the right hand. And Cartwright then just kept coming forward, turned on the gas. Pitters catching him with a left hook. This is Cartwright on the attack, forces Pitters onto the ropes, catches him with a cracking right hand there. And then just kept the attack going, sustained the pressure, went through the gears, and it's what it, it was needed for Cartwright. Really positive response. Gets caught with a good right up good there, but follows back up with two or three shots. Great round. Three rounds to go. That right hand from Cartwright, that almost felt like middleweight power at light heavy because he caught him clean. It was a terrific punch. I think it would have knocked a middleweight out. This is, of course, the bigger man. One of the problems for Cartwright. General sense though that Cartwright's ahead here. Pitter's corner would have told him that he needs a good round here. Got his jab going again. He's got to try and keep his man at bay. Slicing shots to the body. Good right to the body there from Pitters. Shake of the head from Cartwright. And we put a lot of work into that last round, Cartwright. He just took his foot off the gas, maybe feeling the pace a little bit. That's what happens in 10 and 12 round contests. There's that jab though from Cartwright, and every time he looks like he's running out of gas, he puts his foot on the gas. Pitch has just switched off there, just went back to the ropes. That's a better shot from Pitters. He needs to find a bit of space though, Pitters, just stepping in a little, a little bit too close there. That was a good right hand, but he's allowed Cartwright just to recover from that shot. And some tired punches there from Cartwright. It is a little bit more accurate. The Cartwright's head movement to stop. So that's a little bit better for him there, but got to move the head, avoid the shots as he's coming forward. That's better. The combination there from Cartwright. What a terrific fight this is. Still up for grabs, still in the balance, still they're both throwing and there's so much to fight for. Relevance is the main thing at the moment. Relevance at light heavyweight, relevance in this remarkable British picture and Cartwright again trying to pile on the pressure. A tremendous battle. There, that left up, that was a good shot there from Pitters. And Cartwright comes back himself with a good shot. Close round again. That's a good, uh, good shot, shot. Peters. And Cartwright is down! Peters under pressure finds the knockdown. He's called it off. John Latham waves it off. Shaq and Peters with a dramatic and controversial stoppage of Reese Cartwright. Peters with a huge win. Under
under pressure, Richie, but he found the response. Found the response and found the power shots at the end there. I really feel for Cartwright. The referee didn't look, didn't like what he saw in his eyes as caused the, the contest off. I thought it was a very close round up to that point, but Cartwright just slowed towards the end there, and Pitts has found those power shots. What a cracking fight it was. It went this that way, then the other, and Pitters just gets home with that bit of quality at the end there. But take me out after Cartwright. That was some performance from him. Yeah, it was. And it's one that he'll build on. What are your thoughts? I know that John Latham is in a way better position than either of us, but what are your thoughts on the stoppage? Dave, you have to rely on the referee in those situations, and obviously he wasn't happy with what he saw, so you have to go with the, what the ref... Let's have a look at it now. He's the right hand, so he goes down badly here. So the referee then sends Pitters to the corner. Then he comes forward, this is another angle at it, so it's the right hand. Now, that's a, that's a pretty bad knockdown, but he seems to recover from that. Let's have a look. So, goes down, but it's when he gets up and he's looking into the referee's eyes. That's what we have to, to look at, and the referee's a lot closer than what we are. Bangs his head at the back, seems to be okay, but we have to rely on the ref. So, he's counting, he's looking into his eyes, and he, oh, I don't know, but like I say, we have to rely on the referee's decision there. We have to rely on him, but from that evidence, Cartwright seemed to be responding to John Latham's yeah. instructions. He nodded his head, he bided his time, he got up, but John Latham felt that he'd seen enough. Well, what a fight, and we still have the grudge match to come. It's nice to see the two fighters in conversation. I'd watch that again, by the way, if they wanted to, oh, listen, to that, go that way. There's but a rematch all day long there. Absolutely. Controversial stoppage could lead to a rematch. Maybe that's what they've just agreed anyway. That's for another day. We can make it official now with our MC Paul Booth. Ladies and gentlemen, the official end of the contest falls at three minutes of round number eight. Referee John Latham has stopped the bout. In his professional opinion, Rhys Cartwright is in no position to continue. The winner tonight crowned the new WBC International Light Heavyweight Champion from Birmingham, Shakan Peters. Shakan Peters fought through the fire and emerges victorious. A controversial winner, but a winner nonetheless.